ancient of days so let your will be done your will be done let your Let your will, let it be done. Father, let your will be done in my life. Somebody say, let your will, let your will be Somebody just open up tonight. It's not always about us. Let God's will be done in a surrender tonight. Let somebody surrender tonight. Uh, start controlling your life. It will go nowhere if you are in control. Put God in charge tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, put him in charge tonight. Let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Hey, let your will be done tonight. Let your will be done. Your will be done. Let your will be done in my life. Thank Let you, Jesus. Let your will be done. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hand together for this wonderful voice. The voice. The voice of Goshen's. Put your hand together. Let, let begin to just celebrate the voice of Goshen tonight. God bless you. Pastor Cox, I miss you, man. Come on, come to the front. I've been asking about you for some time now. You just preach one night and disappear. What's wrong with you, my man? Can't sit to the front. God bless you, Pastor Cox. Amen, amen. Wonderful servant of God with such a humility. I want to bless the Lord. Can you give it again for the dynamic praise and worship? Amen. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, they usher in the spirit. Amen. There where you know that... Uh, they are living for God when you see the worship keep doing something to all. Amen. I want to bless the Lord for them. It's their gift to the church. Amen. Somebody say amen. Have your seat for a while. Hallelujah. Have your seat for it. And let's talk tonight. We're going to talk tonight because there are some things tonight. The Lord began to tell me that uh, I know this topic for some time, but God want me to kind of like if I have to start over. I want to start over so you can bless our amen. amen there are a lot of errors in the body of Christ I'm not the one to correct it amen God will do his own work and he'll know who to send to correct whatever error it is but for we Goshen by the grace of God <coughs> it's a blessing for God to just kind of put a prophet over your work even when something is not right he come to me and just tell me that is what to do Amen. That's an opportunity. That's a blessing. I, I didn't take. I can't take that lightly. Amen. A lot of things. God Himself come and tell me that is wrong. I don't need to watch any bishop. I don't need to watch any pastor, any prophet, to know that God Himself, by the grace of God, Amen, keep coming to tell me some things that is missing in the body of God. I want to celebrate my wife again in bless the name for her in Jesus' name. Amen. All the hard working people in this ministry. We want to bless the Lord. We are going somewhere in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We are going somewhere. I bless God for people that are carrying the ministry in your heart. It's so much touching. Hallelujah. Especially when my phone kept ringing with call from the teams for the building project. My keep coming. Every information, they got to relay to me. We bless the Lord for such a people that are really carrying this ministry because they have seen where God is taking us, amen? And that's why the devil don't want us to, to be together because when you are together, you move mountain, amen? But the devil is a liar. The Bible says the thief come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, the first time I read that scripture, I didn't get a clear understanding until I started to pray, and God began to tell me the thief will not come unless you have something. Amen, somebody. If you don't have anything, why did thief come in to steal? He thief come to steal, to kill, to destroy. So which means you have to be having something that living for him to kill it. 
you have to be having something that you're keeping or you're hiding for him to steal it. You have to, you have to be having something that you build for him to destroy. He, he had to see family together, friends together, and all of that. And sometimes we'll be thinking that, you know, all the confusions and all the misunderstanding that happen in the battle of Christ, we just think we are the cause. No, Satan is behind it. I don't care how close you are to God, Satan will not leave you. Peter was so close to Jesus. And yes, Satan entered him. Satan entered him. Turn around and say, get deep behind me, Satan. Satan. And one day I will pray against Satan and say, why can't he say his own tongue? Because he needs Satan. So some tongue can deal with him. Amen. In Jesus' precious holy name. But we are blessed with Goshen. We are really blessed to be here tonight. In Jesus' precious holy name. Hallelujah. So there's something I want to discuss tonight. But I want to bless God for Brother Terran, who a brave day was on Monday. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> but he didn't care for his brave day. He left his brave day business. And he came to spend some time with us. We went to the courthouse. You know, the people never take us to go to court, you know. And Terran was like our lawyer. Amen. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Amen. I, I, this is, I haven't seen Terry getting mad at that. My first time, Terry was. So, my, you could see the expressions on his face that he already mad. He didn't want to talk to me. So I, just came back. I said, oh, oh, Terry did not see me. But he was really, really mad. Amen. From this good for nothing people that we have next door. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. But everywhere we go, we are victorious. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are victorious. Hallelujah. It's just pushing us to our destination. Pushing us. They just helping to push us. In Jesus' mighty name. If the enemy know by attacking you, you will go to the next level. They will not attack you. But for every time they attack you, they're, they're helping you. Listen to me. Listen. I'm, let me tell you, let me tell you this. My success. For everything I do and I'm successful, Satan is behind. He helped me to be successful. I'm saying the truth. Satan helped me to live right. Satan helped me to be unconscious. Satan helped me because the Bible says that uh, who rise not against flesh and blood, but against priests and power and power, rulers of darkness. So when Satan used people to attack me, he made me strong. To fight by. Am I speaking to somebody here tonight? The Bible says, the Bible says something. The Bible says, He is the accuser of what? Of the brethren. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. So every allegation and accusations, the author of it is not God. He's not the author of confusion. But Satan is the author of confusion. Amen, somebody. He is the author of confusion. So if Satan continues to tell people that you are a criminal, they're helping you to prove them that you will not be a criminal. Help you to live. So they are helpful. Satan uses them to help us. In Jesus' mighty name. He can never be like God. He tried to be, but he will never be like God. Our God is all powerful. Somebody give it up for the Lord tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. There is a scripture that I want us to look at tonight. John chapter 4, verse 24. And then I know what my topic is, but I want to go there tonight for us to learn something so I can pray for us. Amen. <clears throat> we got some things to do tonight, so I pray to God that I shouldn't be long before you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. John 24. Let's, let's see this. 1, 2, 3, go. 4, 24. I want everybody to read. God is a spirit, and they that worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's deep. Now, it's not you will worship him, but you must. The word there, some of us don't even know how to even, you know, look at this word, but it's so powerful. It, it's not suggestion. He's not suggesting to you. It's, it's a must. So, any other way, it is not the way. But the Bible says God what? God is what? Spirit. It's a spirit. And we must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
So these two combine together, spirit and truth. So if you are if your worship is not a truthful worship, you are not worshiping God. Now, the true worshiper, the Bible says, the true worshiper is a worship where you can be hurting and still worship. But you can't be hurting and be praised. Because something, something happened for you, you're happy and you're praising God. But a true worshiper, no matter how things is in your life, no matter what have come your way, you still know there's a God somewhere that you can worship. In Jesus mighty hand. So that's what the scripture said. The true worshiper must worship God in what? In spirit and in truth. But how can I worship God in spirit? And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm in the flesh. You must worship him in spirit and what? Somebody had a truth. So God wants us to be truthful in our worship. A lot of us, we got to be happy before we worship God. If God don't bless us with, you know, with our rent money, we can't worship God. If God don't bless us with a job, we can't worship God. If God don't bless us with, with what we want, we stop worshiping God. So the scripture says, they that are worshiping must what? Worship be in spirit and in truth. Let's look at Romans. Let me show you something quickly. Now they want to remote here. Romans. I said Romans. Amen. I didn't say remote. I said Romans. Somebody said hallelujah. Yeah. Romans chapter 1, verse 9. Chapter 1, verse 9. It's very powerful. Let us see what the apostle Paul is talking about here. I want to show you something tonight. I want to, I want to get you to a place tonight that. The Lord will elevate you spiritually tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Now look at the verses here. One, two, three, go. Everybody read. For it's my witness who I sell with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I may mention of you always in my prayers. So Paul is saying in other way to serve God, I'm not serving God in the flesh and I'm serving God with what? My spirit, because they that are worshiping, are worshiping what? In spirit and in truth. So which means your flesh cannot worship, your flesh cannot serve God. Not at all. That's the reason a lot of we have not seen the fullness of God. I stay up from last night to this morning. I have not closed my eyes to sleep. The only my wife can tell because she's the only person in my room. Hallelujah. Worshiping God and getting deeper into God. These are things that the Lord begins to show me. You can't be like me. Everybody different. You can't. Tell me on your bed you will snow. And how many minutes? Two minutes you snow. So life is a, it's a stage. It's a level. You know, it can't be the same. God is my witness. So you see, Paul was like swaying. God, my witness. I heard somebody say, the Bible said, don't swear. You didn't end it. The Bible said, don't swear falsely. Don't know, don't think you're lying and you're swearing. <laughs> you know you're lying and you're swearing. The Bible said, do not swear falsely. But yet Paul saying, God is my witness. He was trying to tell them that God is a witness, which means he's not lying. He's serving God in spirit. Hallelujah, somebody. So now watch this. Help me tonight. Father, we thank you for this message. Use my tongue. Use my head. Bless me. Let your people that are sitting here, let it receive it with gladness. There's something changed in their life. In Jesus' mighty name. So I want you to open your spirit, man, to receive because Satan will come to block you from receiving. He will block you from receiving. I wish God... It's the word of God is a seed, so it should always come to black that seed, so that seed cannot germinate inside of you. A lot of us hear God, what God says, but a lot of us don't really do what God says. Amen. Amen. I was listening to a lady not too long before we came to church, a lady was preaching on the TV. She was telling her, her church that, that she's looking for a perfect church. Somebody must show her what a perfect church is on earth. 
And then she stood up and told them, she said, you want a pet pet church? Go to heaven. Which means if you leave one church for another, you don't even know where you're going. <laughs> you don't even know where you're going to deal with. You know, every relationship starts good, right? Hello, somebody. Every relationship starts what? Very good. But the end, or the mellow. Somebody say hallelujah. When you end on a house fire, the first week they will, your, they will treat you real good. The second week they will treat you good. The third week, I, 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 know, I know a guy I was stopping with in Minnesota. He was very excited to receive me. I used to bop his hair back home. I used to bop his, bop his hair. So when he received me with gladness, very happy. One week, we were playing car together, talking about back home. The second week, things were fine. He told me where to go, where, where in the refrigerator I can eat from, everything, where my food is. He gave me the remote to watch TV and everything. Everything was all right. That week. Somebody said hallelujah. The fourth week. <laughs> what? Jesus. The God I was serving me, telling me where my food, where to go to food. The whole topic changed. It started really good. For a while it changed. Then the sixth week, fifth, sixth week, I remember one month, one week. When he came from work, heaven is my witness, he never even went upstairs. He stopped because I was, I was stopping in the basement. So he came straight to the basement and said, Man, I want to talk to you. Man, I want to talk to you. Ah, what the tone have changed now? This guy that was excited, we'll play cards together, we'll lecture, we'll gossip. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to shoot. We'll gossip and all of that. You, time later, man, the man said, Prof, you uh, call me prophet now, they change. You know, when people now, you know, when they tie with you now, they move your title from you. Amen. They call you. <laughs> when people tie with you, they don't call you by their title again. I can know my children. All my children I have, you know, I know them. When they're angry, when something making them mad, I know because the thing can change. The, the thing can change. Amen. That's how I call prophet. I know something. I want to say, Papi, then I know everything going good. Somebody shout hallelujah. Then I have a father and son. So you got to know your children. Come on, tell somebody, say, know your people, know your children. Hey, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I know that when it change. Amen. The moment I see Pape, then I know everything all right. I'm not angry with that. Amen. The guy changed my name from prophet. Hey, my mama. I'm uh -huh. going I won't see you. I'm talking the truth. He said, you know, I got some family from Ghana coming and they will be needing this place here. Why you didn't tell me ever so you got family from Ghana coming when everything was okay? You didn't tell me you have family coming from Ghana. Everything was just okay. What's wrong? What's going wrong? Amen, somebody. And that's what I'm telling the truth. So I said, man, I go, how long I have to stay here? He said, man, I go, the book I'm in next month. Cha! Amen? Next month, yes, next month, you got to go. Jehovah, Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So listen to me. So, you know, I, I said, man, I go, give me some time, man. Give me some time, you know. And, and this guy here that I'm talking about, He's the one who went for my clothes to where I was staying. I was staying with my mom. On, on, you know, staying with my mom. She been here. You been seeing her. He, oh man, I go, you know, come start life here and everything. He's the one who went for my clothes. He tore my suitcase and carried it in a car. They see God that I'm telling you about. I'm serious. I, I'm giving you something that I hear me. Some of y'all, you are starting a relationship. You are free reading with some people and they're encouraging you. You better be careful because how long can they can they can they keep you? Amen, somebody. Yes. In Jesus' mother, how long? How long? I remember a girl. One time she came for delivering. And the bishop did her delivering real good. She got delivered. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. And she sat in the church and she started talking about the other church that she left. I'm serious. 
She said, oh, no, not that day. You're too good. You're too powerful. You're too this. I want to join your church. You can say, wow. Get one day, two more to join your church. Say, All right. Just no welcome. Hallelujah. Now I knew the girl that was behind her husband was in that church. The, ch- the new church she joined now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't want to go to the high school because you should watch it. Hear me. I'm just trying to tell you. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Some of you that are changing relationship. This husband of mine, not correct. And you better stay and pray for him to change. Because you don't just know the six part are coming. Why are you coming with? You don't just know. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Never leave setting for uncertainty. I have gone into my message already. Hallelujah. As I said, I'm not going to be. Then watch it. Then watch it. So here Paul was saying, for God is my what? God is my what? My witness. For what? I serve God with my what? Spirit. So there's no way. And let me speak clear so you can hear. All Christians in the church and everybody that are watching me from online. And I got more of you online than anywhere else. So let me speak to online people. After I preach, I go home, people text me on Messenger, a whole lot more, how they were blessed by the message and all of that. Amen. So let me speak to my own live viewer. Hallelujah. Oh, God, over 4,000 going to prayer now. So everybody come to worship with us. Amen. He said, I serve God with my spirit. Why would Paul saying, I serve God with my spirit? Because you can't serve God in your flesh. Why you can't serve God in your flesh? Because your flesh got feeling. Your spirit don't feel. If you continue to be in the flesh, you will continue to get hurt. There's no way you can go with all you know. Jesus says something in Luke chapter 17. He said, as long as you live, there will be offense. People will offend you. But this is the part that I love. He said, but who unto them that the offense come from? So the person who causing you to get hurt, he said, they already condemned. That will warn me you are condemned already. So if you have, if you're walking in the spirit, you realize that those that are hurting you, they want to see you. They want to see your real self. So the apostle Paul here realized that I can't save God in the flesh. I will keep getting hurt. Because this God here, everywhere you go, this is the same. Amen. Amen. There are some churches that I know. I sent the videos of my son here. If the dealership do wrong, the pastor can line it up and look for switch. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it? And beat them real good. Oh, daddy, daddy. Oh. Line it up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember a girl left our church one time because we were taking two offerings. She got angry and left. She said people left money. She went and joined another church across the street. They were taking six offerings. She ran and came back. I <laughs> need <laughs> 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 love. I said, love what happened. She said, no, no, no. I better be here. Amen. I won't be in my praise and go. They say sit because they got they got they got a special offering, benevolent offering, pastoral offering, and, 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 and you know, and the real offering and just offering belly form. She said, voila. I got to go by. <laughs> Amen. I was praying the morning and I saw, on, I saw Goshen on TV. I was so happy. In my spirit, I saw the church on TV. Huge and very big. And I was laughing. The Lord said, what are you laughing for? I said, I'm happy. He said, do you know how it, how, what, what it takes to get there? It's for you. How to get there. Somebody say amen. I serve God with my spirit. They that worship God, my worship God. There's no way under the sun you can serve God in the flesh. The flesh will be hurt. The flesh is very sensitive. 
But when you are in the spirit, now watch this. I don't want to go through that teaching before I, may, <coughs> before I forget my teaching, what I want to teach on that. But watch this. Do you know why people die? Do you know why people die? Do you know why? Let me tell you. Now watch this. Now, your body cannot, the flesh cannot stay in pain. When the pain, the spirit can ask, this, when the pain is in the body, the spirit can leave. When your body has too much pain, and the spirit can leave, can just leave you. You're gone. You're there. But there are people who can stay in pain, and the spirit remain. Because you can't serve God in the flesh. So watch this. When you are spiritual, and real, real spiritual, when the flesh is hurting, you can leave from the flesh and take care of the flesh and come back in this. Ah, oh my goodness, nobody here. <laughs> you see, I know I'm going somewhere. Somebody, it will catch somebody, amen. So, see, see, so Paul said, I, I, I'm in the spirit. So, because the flesh here now can't stay in pain. So, when you are this, in the spirit continuously, you don't pay attention to the spirit, don't pay attention to the pain. Because the pain that in the flesh, because when you are spiritual, you can service your flesh. Somebody shout hallelujah. You can live from the spirit, I mean, from the flesh and take care of some business on the flesh and get back in the flesh. Say, yeah, I'm ready to go. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, yeah, you don't understand it because it's so deep for you. Somebody say amen. I'm giving you some things that will help you. Continue to be in that spirit. Now, when you're in the spirit, you understand things. What the flesh, the fleshless man cannot understand. That's what Paul said. I'm always in the spirit. Pray in the spirit without ceasing. But let me go to my message tonight. It's what I want to preach on tonight. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at the book of First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Then I switch to my message tonight and we'll, and we'll pray and we'll continue for a little while in Jesus' mighty name. There are some secret I want to show you here. I'm itching. I'm ready. I'm ready. Itching to tell you. I don't know so much you can handle. Somebody shout out. There are some secret God want to reveal in this place. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. For so much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So Paul is saying in the passage of scripture that when you are in a spirit, you will realize that your labor is not to men, it's unto the Lord. And your reward is not unto, it's not from men, it's where? From the Lord. Because he said, to every labor, there is a profit to every labor. Those that labor, there's a profit in the vineyard. Your labor can never be in vain. I prophesy some matter here, your labor is not in vain in Jesus' matter name. Yes, your labor in the is not in vain. This scripture, the reason why I brought this scripture to now, Pastor Cole, because it is this scripture that have changed my entire life. It has made me never to quit whatever I found myself doing. Because I realize that what I'm doing is not unto me. That's why even if I see three persons here, I will preach like if I'm preaching to a thousand people. Why? Because I'm doing my job, what my father gave me. It's not about the crowd, it's about the commitment that I have made to God. My blessing. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Which means if you're in the spirit, nothing move you. Paul was always in the spirit. Nothing move you. Say you better know me and I see me get vexed, angry before. Tell the truth. But you don't know I can get angry inside. My wife taught me a word. My wife, my wife, my wife, my wife, my wife taught me a word. She the one. Show me that word. The first person I heard that word from it was her. 
suck it in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes you suck something in. Amen. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, Father, help me to be steadfast in Jesus' name. Now, let me show you a secret tonight that the Lord gave me here. I want to speak about something that I capture from the Holy Spirit's call. The place of a father. The place of what? Of father. Repeat that after me. The place of the father. Just the teaching, the Lord gave me the teaching here. So that we can know certain things that we don't know. And I thank God you are here, maybe, because my message tonight, my message tonight, and when I saw you, it was a confirmation of what I wanted to preach because you did it. She did something, she didn't know what she was doing, but she did it. She came to me and said something when her father was alive. And that's why I want to talk about you forget, but I will tell you. Somebody shout hallelujah. <clears throat> so when I saw you tonight, I said, Oh my goodness, this is a confirmation of what God gave me. The place or the authority of the Father. Listen to me. Oh my goodness, Lord, help me tonight. They think it's, it's too deep. It will help somebody tonight. Amen? Now, I'm not saying mother don't have place in the life of children. Amen? There are some things we heard before. I want you to hear it again for the second time. And anytime you hear word one, two times, God wants you to do something about it. Amen? So, and, and, and it's not that I want to repeat things, but because somebody, one person who I've not heard it, God wants you to hear it. And so if you've been hearing it, it's an opportunity for you to hear it for the second or the third time. So I say the blessing of the Father and the place of the Father. Are you hearing me? Let me see the hands of those that have Father in their life. Raise your hand. Let me see that. Bless the Lord for you. All right? Biological father, raise your hand. If your father stay alive. If your father stay alive, raise your hand. If, if your father stay alive, raise your hand. All right. Amen. 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 <laughs> somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> it will help somebody tonight. Amen. Watch this. <clears throat> now, I said it before I say it again. Be honest with me here. Who here, under the sound of my voice, you chose your father that born you? <coughs> I'm going somewhere to help somebody. <coughs> Amen. Who here chose their father? Oh, uh, God, before you send me to that man, let me see what he got so cash. Who here chose their father? <laughs> she, Abigail said she wished she could choose her father. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No one chose them. Listen, you can't choose a father. You can't. God has never changed. These are some of the things the angel continued to talk to me about. And I will share them with you tonight for free. <coughs> Amen. You did not choose your parents. Did you? It is God who gave them to you. So even if your father is the poorest in Nigeria, he's still your father. If your father is a royal from the king's kinsman and he's from the right, that's your father. If your father is a fisherman, he's your father. If your father is a farmer, he's your father. If your father did not go to school, it don't change your father, he's not your father. Your father is your father. If your father is a wish, he is your father. If your father is wicked, he's still your father. Somebody say, he's still my father. If your father is bad, we all know, but why? He still your father. You can't change it. You can't change your father. There's no way you can change it. You came from him. So, God said the same way you did not choose your biological father, you can choose your pastor. There is no shopping mall for a pastor. I'm looking for the pastor to be my pastor. You didn't know how you got here. You didn't know. It was God who brought you here. Somebody shout hallelujah. You did not know. You can't choose your spiritual father. There are three kinds of father. 
Jesus unlearned them, we should call your heavenly father, who is responsible for the universe and responsible for all father. Then you have your spirit, your biological father, which you came on earth through. Then you have your spiritual father, which through you go back to heaven. Yeah. Let me say that to you. Your spiritual father is the one responsible for your return. Your biological father is one responsible for your coming. But for you to return, it depends on your spiritual father based on scripture. Except you got your own Bible. Except you have your own Bible. There are some things that God wrote, you can't change it. Many of us will try to change it to fit us. We are competing on order, order. You can't. He said, I will give you a pastor that after my heart. Now you will choose a pastor that you want. Many of us, we are going places because we want to hear what we want to hear. And God did not send up places that we go and then we pick up some trouble. Oh, I'm speaking to somebody here tonight. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, get heaven. The, Jesus said, when you pray, say, our heavenly father. And every time the Bible addressing God, heavenly father. When you pray, say our heavenly father. So if there is a heavenly father, there's a heavenly father. It's not the same. And father, the word father means to feed on. Somebody who feed you. That will feed you. What a physical food or spiritual food. But the definition of a father never changed. Father is a father. Somebody say father is a father. Say last, say father is a father. So there are privilege and there are right that goes to father. There are some things, if the woman do it, she ought to order, except the men do it. There are some things that women are doing in the home, which of course, that make the home order, order. And God is an ordinary God. He's a God of excellence. He came, he sent a prophet to Hezekiah and said, put your heart in order. Because God loves order. When you order, order, forget it. It might be good to you because the Bible said there is a way that seems right unto the man, but it end that destruction. There are some things you're doing, it, it, it seems so right to you. You think you're right, but you're just wrong. My wife and I were watching Catherine Como. That's a man who preached for 40 years, and he got born again the day he visited Catherine Como. All the year he was preaching something that was not right. Imagine the people that follow him. He just became born again to receive the real to the real gospel. He was living in deception. Just because he followed one doctrine. And that one doctrine he followed, it destroyed him for 40 years. Captain Como, you know her. Amen, somebody. So that is the reason why God gave to the church. You didn't choose them, but God gave them to the church. Apostle, prophet, teachers to enhance, to equip. So if you are not on this Authority. Men of all things that we can fly it out. I'm speaking to somebody here tonight. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now watch this. As I said, you don't choose your parents. You don't choose your biological parents. You don't choose your spiritual parents. They seem to did not choose God. Okay, somebody say hallelujah. Look at it. You did not what? You did not choose who? God. You didn't choose him. I was telling my wife, my bishop made me to remove some people's name that I was sending for. And replace some people's name. How to tell the people that I don't want you to come. It was something that small for me. But I have to obey. Because obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Anything you want to hear that will make you feel good, God not in it. God want to do something to you that will make you hurt. Painful then it will be helpful to you. So I'm speaking on fathers tonight, and I'll pray we'll be out of here. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The place of a father, that's my topic. The place of a father. First of all, in marriage, a mother, a mother had no right to name a child. Some of y'all know that. <laughs> Amen. A mother have no authority to name a child. Naming of a child, God have gave that right and that place to the father. 
Now, let me help you. Some of you who are not here, the first time I preached this message. Why? Because children are not from the mother. Children are from the father. Mothers are carrier. Mothers are something we call ikibedo. They keep it and give it back. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I'm coming somewhere, so I will help you tonight. Amen. I will help you. Oh, women, women are keepers. That's why they can keep things for 50 years. Things that men forget about women can still keep it. They are keepers. Somebody said they are keepers. They can keep. A woman can forget the day she met her husband. What are the 50, 25 years? She will not forget the, the clothes color that she was, he was wearing when they met. The place they met, she will never forget it. They, they keep things. But making the memo children's birthday. <laughs> They'll be asking, oh, so when your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they can't remember. Amen. Many times I, I can be asking my wife, I say, Chicky, she says, you know your son's birthday. I say, I, 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 I can't. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm serious. Women, they carry details. They're good to explain. That's the reason why if you got a case and you got a female lawyer, 100% chance that you can win that case because they know how to explain and talk. I'm so serious. When you have a female lawyer on your side, forget it. That case there, just forget it. They know, don't, don't never carry a female lawyer on a rip case. You can have billions of dollars. You can win that case. You finish. They know how to explain. So I'm telling you tonight, the place of a father and why father are so important. Can I talk to somebody here tonight? <clears throat> There's a reason why hear me and hear me. 95% of African Americans are in prison was because no father figure was in the home. Amen, somebody. Now, the five percent of those guys that are in prison, there were no father figure over their life, so they do anything. If a father in the home and our father start to beat his wife, if he have children, boys, they will grow up and was, they will start beating their wife because what a son see father doing, that's what they do. Like son, the father, the father, the what? So Jesus said, whatever I hear my father say, that's what I do. And whatever the father tells me to do, that's what I do. So listen to me and hear this. Something's going to help you tonight. Something's going to help you because I want to pray for people here tonight that are going through some curses in their life. Because curse work. Curse work. Don't let nobody fool you. Curse work. It work. I don't call it. You know the meaning of curse? Nobody can name the meaning of curse? Don't go to Google. Google will not help you. The meaning of curse means the result of what I have done. Go in. Eh? The meaning of curse. Because if you don't do nothing, curse cannot hold you. The scripture says to so Proverbs 26. A curse will all cause cannot hold. So if I don't do nothing to you, swear me, do anything you want to do, it, nothing can happen. Because a curse will all cause cannot hold. So the word curse me, the result of my doing. Because whatsoever see a man so well, so shall he reap. That's how God made the whole universe. That's how the universe is around today. If you are here today, you do something wrong, that thing coming by. You go all around. If it come by and meet you, and you finish forgetting already. You say, ah, Jesus. I knew a man in the Bible. Maybe some of you don't read your Bible, but I can read mine. Amen? And I would recommend you read your Bible. There was a man in the Bible. The Bible said, he, he worked so hard, and he stole a lot of food. He broke down the old bounds, and bear new ones. All his life he was storing food. He never had God in his plane. And the time for him to take life easy. And God said to Ned, you fool. Your life is required. Amen, somebody. You fool, your life is required. And God took him. In your plane, never leave God. <clears throat> Amen, somebody. 
So I'm here to let you know tonight. The problem that we go through, or the problem that you face today, in your life, or what you are going through, it takes a father figure to help you all. Don't be proud. Amen. What your mother cannot take of you, a father figure can take it of you. So that's the reason if you don't have a biological father, you say have an opportunity to have a spiritual father. Because the word father can be the same definition. The word father can be the same meaning. If it happens for you to have a biological father, find a spiritual father as well. Amen? Because spiritual father deal with spiritual things. And biological father deal with what? Physical things. The scripture says so in Hebrew chapter 12. It's there. I don't want to go there because of time. So I'm here to let you know tonight that the place of a father is very important in every man's life. There are some women because the way the men treated them and they, 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 because of their pain, what they went through, and they take that pain and transfer it to the children. And the children turn against their father that's supposed to bless them. Never do that. Amen. Just because you are hurting, you transfer your hurt into the main child. Because not enough percent of that child belongs to your husband. That's why when you do DNA and the result comes, they don't tell you not enough point nine the woman. Not enough point nine what? The man. Not enough point nine one percent for the woman. Bitch, eh? Princess, you got one percent in pressure. Consent got not enough. So you can take that child and you get that child. One percent there for you. You be like, what about one percent? Get about one percent. Not a nine percent because of the man. That's why when you do DNA, it's not a nine percent. Why? Because the man owns the child. So you have right to name what he own. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is what we're missing today. Just because a man treats you bad does not mean you should destroy him to the children. Because for those children to be successful, it depends. On the man. It depends what? On the man. Men of all, we're pressing, we're pressing our children man against their father because the father stepped out of the house and went and cheated. And then the child that cheated, that the father that cheated, deal with the father, leave the child or a. Or else you destroy that child. So that's the reason why many children today in America, around the world, they have way war. Because well, there was no father figure over their life to tell them the right thing to do. And even the girls children, the reason why they don't know how to treat a man because there was no father home. They never saw their mother treating their dad the way that you want them to treat you. So by right, a woman has to leave her house until she gets married. And a woman don't a woman don't give the child up. It is a man. Who gave this woman to be married to this man? The father, the one who had the right. The, wo the woman don't have the right to give the child. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now I'm going to help you to natural scripture so you can understand something. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, I'm enjoying this. So you can't serve God when you're not in the spirit. If you honor spiritual, you understand this thing tonight when you are spiritual. Somebody say amen. Because it takes spiritual people to understand spiritual things. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. The father responsibility. To name the child. First Chronicle chapter 9. I mean verse 4, 9. First Chronicle. Look at scripture tonight so we can close the thing quicker. First Chronicle. First Chronicle. Media, First Chronicle chapter 9, I mean 4 verse 9. First Chronicle 4, 9. The blessing is coming on somebody tonight. Amen. The blessing is coming on somebody tonight. Amen. First Chronicle 4 verse 9. Who in the media? All right, so anybody got it on their bow? Let's read for me, read for me. First Chronicle. Somebody in that place? Now Corinthians, First Chronicle. 
4 verse 9. First Chronicle, not Corinthians here. Yeah, get, him, get one microphone and read. It says, there was a man named Jabez mm -hmm. who was more honorable than any of his brothers. Okay, she got it on the screen. Amen. All right. Let's look at the screen. Thank you, Shudi. One, two, three, go. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him in sorrow. Her poor sorrow, she took her sorrow and named it on a child. Why? Because there was no man around. She took the pain she went through and said, because I born you in pain, your name pain. She forget to know that life and death in the power of the tongue. She called a child pain and the boy started to experience pain. First of all, it was not a place to name him. Then the name she gave him was a worst name she ever gave him in life. Look at verse 10. Then I'll show you some scripture. Look at verse 10. So we can correct some things tonight in the spirit. Amen? Verse 10. And Jabewa, Jab, Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would have blessed me indeed and enlarged my coat, and that he might be with me, and thou would not keep me from evil, that it may not give me, grieve me. And God granted his request. That we should request. Because why? Everything that he asked for, everything he prayed for, it was something that he was experiencing. He was grieving. He was in pain. And, and, and nothing was working for him. So he had to pray because the knee was affecting him. Is somebody hearing me here tonight? Now, who gave him the knee? This is his mother. Why the mother named me like that? Because she was in pain. Now, let, let me help you. Let me help you. Somebody say, help me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Genesis 35. Go to Genesis 35. Genesis chapter 35. Let me show you the, the mistakes some women make. And they continue to make. Anybody, any women here name their child? Anybody, you name your child? You name your child? Maybe because the father was not around. You name your? All right. Jesus, Jesus, all right. Amen. Let's see. This. <laughs> 35 verse 16 to 18. 35. 16 to 18. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little to come to Ephraim. And Rachel traveled, which was in pain. And she had hard labor. She was in pain. She was in labor on her journey to Africa. Amen. And it came to power when she was in hard labor. That the man was said to her, fear not, that shall have this son also. That means you will not die. The have that she will give her hope, but the hope did not last. Keep going, verse 18. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing her when she was dying, which means for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but the father called him Benjamin. The meaning of Benoni is pain. Go by and read it. Check it out. Why? Because she was dying and naming the boy. She was dying, so she transferred the pain. But because the father was there, many of you that name your children because father was not around. Because there's the one supposed to correct that thing. The Bible said, and the father said, no, his knee cannot be called Benoni. But his father called him Benjamin. Change the name. The father changed the name. Listen to me. Jabez name was named by his mother. And this child, mother, Benjamin, mother named me Benana because she was giving breath while dying. On her day of death, she named the child Pain. Somebody shout hallelujah. So because of that, God said that that in this life that we should name our children with them because we have authority over them to name them a blessing as well. That's a place of a father to name a child, to bless a child. So if your father don't bless you, you're not blessed. Amen, somebody. 
she was in peace. Keep every re, 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 let me see, let me see. That's what happened. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. May God deliver you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for the blessing of the Lord to be upon somebody tonight in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. The blessing of the Father. A Father can bless, a Father can curse. That's the power that God gave. The authority that God gave. Never in your lifetime make the father or make your children rather to be against the father because the blessing released from the father. Somebody shout hallelujah. I will go to the New Testament small. I go to the New Testament. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, New Testament. I want to combine this thing tonight because the sweet part coming soon. I want to combine this thing tonight and see something so you can understand the rule of a father in your life. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Is that Luke chapter 1? Yes. Luke chapter 1, verse 59. That in the case of Zachariah and John the Baptist, Zachariah, his mother was causing him problems. So the angel told you, you're not going to speak until the child is born. And I read, one, two, three, go, everybody read. And it came to pass that on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. And they called him Zachariah after the name of his father. Stop there. The father was not his wrong. His father was dumb. I mean, deaf and dumb. He was not around. Why? Because he was trying to speak into this, into what God was doing for them. So God said, before you destroy the thing, I'm going to keep you dumb. So they allowed him, he did not speak. Because they wanted that child wanted to be God wanted to preserve that child because his mother was going to destroy it. Are you with me? So because he was not around, and the people decided to name the child after the father. But see the mystery of God. None of this name that the father had in mind to give the child. But because he couldn't speak at that time, he was deaf. I mean, he was dumb. So the mother, the spirit of God, transferred the name to the mother. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Spirit of God transferred the name to the mother. But the people know traditionally, they know that the father, the one who's supposed to name the child. That's why they were naming him after the father. Look at go down again, you see something. Sister. Go to sister. And his mother answered and said, No, not so. Which means, No, you're not supposed to name it that. No, I know. You have no right to name the child. No. But. He shall be called John. The mother not naming the child child John. Amen. But listen to me. It has to be confirmed by the father. So the spirit of God moved over now to the to, to, to the wife and named the child John. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's look at sister one and see something here. Sister one. Keep going. Sister one. Oh, she's on. He said, No. The mother said, No, 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 no. You have no right to name the child. Sister one, keep going. Ah, so we're going somewhere. Amen. Amen. Can somebody read? Uh, uh. Sister one, sister one, one. Say so we're come back. <laughs> and they said unto her, "There is none of the kindred that is called by that name. Why you want to call that child that name?" So they said. None of your family got that name. Why you want to name John? He's supposed to give her the father name. But the father was dumb. He was deaf, right? I mean, deaf and dumb. He just couldn't speak. Sister 2, look at Sister 2 quickly. Let me help you here, Sister 2. And we're going father. And they made a sign to the father because he couldn't speak. They were trying to sign to him. Mm, Somebody can do sign. Amen. Sign language. Amen. And they made a sign to the father. How we have, how he who have called, called the child. How he who have him called, have him called. So the father, the true son, because they know by right, the woman have no place to name the child. So they want to ask the father by son, because it was not the place of her to name the child. The thing we play with today, we order, order. And we take it for granted. 
Amen. Amen. Sister 3. Look at Sister 3. Go to Sister 3 quickly. The place, place of the blessing of the Father. And he asked for a writing table because he couldn't speak. And he wrote saying, his knee is John. He confirmed the name. He couldn't hide it, but I know that was the name. So with all the father confirmation, that name was not going to stay. Who confirmed you by the name they gave you? Am I speaking to somebody here? The name, who was there to confirm? This is the name. Oh, babe, that name, what child is name? Oh, no, this name can't be. Who confirmed that? He couldn't talk. How did he know? And the Bible said, and they marvel. All of them marvel. Was shocked. They were surprised. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So there was a place that the whole of Israel came together and said, What? This has to be God. This man dumb. And he didn't stay. He could write the name that the mother called. Something is wrong. But when God want to do something, he don't really do something in the, in, in, in the night. He do it in the spirit. Before it, 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 before it take place in the physical, he do it what? In the spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I hear God visiting somebody tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray God is visiting somebody tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness, whoever that need me, it is not from God. God is naming somebody tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. And hear me very well. The place of a father is very important. Because the blessings, when the father releases on you, it releases on you. When the father places a curse on you, it's hope. This woman sitting over there, says, I love her so much. She came to me and she brought piece of paper, she said, I'm going to write everything I want my father to speak with my life before he died. Did you not say so? How you know that a father that won't get blessed? Can you tell me how you figure it out? From the what? From the Bible. Amen. She wrote a whole list thing. I want you to speak over me. I, I, I'm going to make him to speak this thing over my life before he died. Some of you that lost your parents that blessing is supposed to release on you. It left in the dark. Now, nah, I'm, coming, I'm coming to that place so you can understand something. Amen? So, your father, you can, how can the blessing release from your father to you? You have to make him do it. She wrote and make him to do it. So, the Bible says in Genesis 27, that when Isaac was about to die, he sent Esau and said, Esau, go for a venison, which means dear meat. Go and bring me a venison so when I eat, I can bless you. Because of time, we're going to be going, I'm going to call the scripture to you. Genesis 27. And the Bible said, when Esau went to fish for venison, his mother heard that the father had sent Esau. You know, her favorite son was Jacob because his mama, baby, he all way home. Amen, Amen somebody. Esau was all way hunting. In the bush, the stronger one, the responsible one, with the red skin, he's always hunting, bringing some stuff. So the father said, nah, you have work all along. I'm going to bless you now, but I need you to go and fetch me venison and cook me a soup that I loved. Bring me so I can bless you, so my soul can bless you. When the mother heard it, she called her furious son, Jacob. She said, your father is about to bless that bush man who always in the bush. So what y'all want you to do? Go and kill a goat. Say he can't see we're going to trick him. Because that spirit of trick there was already in Jacob. That's the meaning Jacob Trister. He know how to call on people thing. He know how to manipulate something. There are some people in his life. They can get something by crook or by hope. They can manipulate to get the blessing. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible said the mother called him. Now watch this. Watch this. My concern here, Deacon, if the mother had right to bless her son, why would she make him to lie? Why would she make him to go kill a goat and appear before his father as Esau while he was Jacob? And she had the right, and it was a place of blessing. 
the mother place to bless the child is to pray for the child. The father place is to what? To release on the child. You know, curses or blessings. Somebody shout hallelujah. So her business was, she said, okay, bring this. Let me eat. And then what happened? Jacob went and killed a goat. Jacob killed a goat. Killed a goat. Can I tell you something deeper? He killed a goat. And he cooked the soup. He brought the soup. His father said, oh, I, what, they were so fast. Why were you so fast? I sent you now to go fetch a venison. Now you are here. What's wrong? What, what was that? He said, no, I was lucky this day. And the, this thing was just around. So I just, he said, ah, your voice looked like mm, Makula, bro. Your voice looked like East, I mean, Jacob. But your skin, now because he killed a goat and wore the skin. Because Esau was very hairish. He was hairish. So now because the old man was blind, he couldn't see well. So he said, drag closer. Let me feel your skin. So he drew closer and he felt the skin was very hairish. He said, ah, you're having the skin of Esau. But the voice of Jacob, something is wrong somewhere. Oh, my goodness. He said, but yeah, bless me. I'm your son, Esau. And he started blessing the blessing. And the mother was sitting down, saying this kind of thing. Hear what she said. She said, if there be a curse, let it be on me. She placed a curse on herself for her son. If she had a right to bless, she would not talk curse. She was blessing, but because it was now her place to bless the child, so she had to trick him for the father to bless him. Some of you don't know how to collect blessing from your father because you know what? You're not around, you're disobedient, you are a liar. You are someone you even got men. You never brought a man to your father. For you know, okay. You marry? Did your father okay? Some of you don't have father. Oh my goodness. Amen. Somebody. Did your father okay? Your wedding. Your husband. Did your father okay? I'm speaking to West Honey. Did your father okay this man sitting here? Did you okay? That means that you are blessed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Did your father okay your, your wedding? Did you okay? That means you are blessed because it is a father that will say okay, not the mother. The mother can say no. When the father says yes, God accept it. The mother can say no. But when the man said, that's what I want for my son. You have no right, no authority when D is getting married. And you say, oh, I don't like that Japanese woman. But the father can say, oh, yeah, that's my wife. I want my son to marry. You have no right. A whole, a bless. Oh, my goodness. Nobody hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do, 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 listen, listen, that's not me. Go to God. Amen. That's not me saying that it is the Bible. That's a bless. Mother did I come in with twins. She can't name no two until you say, yes, I'm the one have the right to name the twins. Somebody shout hallelujah. I have the right to tell them what, oh my goodness, the devil is a liar tonight. Somebody here about to be blessed. Amen. So listen to me. So that's the reason why when you call me father or prophet or papa, I have the right spiritually to break some teeth from off your life because it is my place to bless you. It is my place to release you. So whatever thing I say, God will back you because why? I'm in line with his word. Somebody shout, I'm in line with his word. I'm his father. I'm your father. Spiritually, you guys, heavenly father, biological father, and spiritual father. Father me feed on. So we dare to bless you. And somebody who don't believe spiritual father, I thank God for you. Keep going. Amen. Keep encouraging people that have spiritual father. Keep on going. I was watching that how I from Ghana. He was saying, keep going, keep going, keep doing it. Continue. They respect other people. Just continue. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Just do. Walk away from your pastor. Say all kind of things. Just keep going. Keep on going. You see nothing yet. God will never change his rule. He will never change his status. What God said, he means what he said. He can't change. Jacob had to kill a goat to wear a goat skin and go collect blessing. Somebody shout Hallelujah. Jacob forgot what he did. Many years later, after he had so many children, many years later, his favorite son, the one they call Joseph, his favorite son, that he saw a coat of many colors and placed the coat on a boy, his favorite son, they tricked him for the same thing. The Bible said, they sold Joseph, his brethren sold him to a trader. And they kill an animal, a kill goat, the same goat he used to trick. They kill the same goat and dip the coat of many colors in the blood of a goat 
and brought the coat to the same Jacob. Your son you love, a wild animal kill him. Here he cold bloody. Jacob finally forgetting what he did. Long time to his father. The same thing he did to his father after many years. When he was doing nothing, he didn't even have one child. He forgot everything. Many years it come to him. Whatever see you sow, you will surely reap it. You better be careful how you treat people today. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 15 verse 13, he said when the sin has filled over, God will react. The reason why he has not reacted, because he has not reached the place he's supposed to reach. So all you think you are going for free. All you think you are doing, you're working for free. But I come to let you know, obey and respect your parents because there is a blessing that attached when your father, no matter your condition, when you say God bless you, heaven respond to it. When you say God bless you, heaven respond to him. Somebody shout hallelujah. The blessings. She killed a goat and stole a blessing. She went to the same thing to him. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You see my life? Yeah? You see my life? When you enter my room all day, I'm impacting myself. Positive people. Worshiping positive people that impart the world. Father, that was it. That I held on me. When you attack people that held on you, you will never get to where they are. The Lord showed me that. When you attack somebody that holds on you, you will not get to their age. When you attack people that have made progress, who are doing things, you're mocking them. You will never get to where they are. It's so serious. Because God's word don't change. Whatever see your man sow, so shall he reap. Amen, somebody. Whatever you do, there's a result. When you have sex, you get pregnant, you get baby. The result of sex that it be pregnancy. So, thing you do, you have result for what you do. And that's the reason why many of our blessings have been blessed. We think we're blessed. We're not supposed to be blessed like that. We're supposed to be more blessed than they. But because of certain attitude, disobedient to our parents. I heard a girl. I went to the suit place and I saw, I taught this thing before. And I saw a five years old, a five years old. This is my second or third time saying it. A five years old girl. Her mother came to her and said, honey, it's time for us to go home. And a five year old girl in my present turned around and look at her mother and told her mother, can you see me talking? She was talking to the cashier. And the mother said, it's time to go home. This five years old honey works. And look at her mother and say, Can you see me talking? I gotta finish before we go. This is where I was standing, something inside of me. I needed some AC because I was getting hotter than ever before. Somebody shout hallelujah. Polina Yaki to me, Polina, yeah. Polina Yaki to me. Polina, Polina came to me. She said, What happened between you and your son? He telling everybody to bake you. Because the men know who I am. When I want to disappear, yeah, my wife. Something that he did. Six months, no communication between us. Fact that I have not seen him. He make him be begging for him. Every day, people call me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hear me. Hear me. A child. Do not spoil the world. You spoil a child. I love you, honey. I lost you. I love you, honey. I will lose you. I love you, honey. I will lose you. That's why many African American children are lost in the country because what was not in them from the beginning, they want to take it out to the end. It's late. If you don't treat a child while the child is young, when a child is grown, you have no control over that child. I heard somebody say, There's no way you can kill, or there's no way you can train, or you can show an old dog a new trick. Listen, I forget I was a pastor. I slapped away to the airport. They ran to me. Prophet, prophet, you pastor, you, pastor, you, you prophet. My son, I did it. I forget for one that I was a prophet. <laughs> My security came to me. The police guy came because in Africa, I get heavy guard up. You know, he can say, oh, 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 prophet, prophet. I said, I forget. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'll post like here, here. Big boy. Amen. I did. Amen. I did. I can love you, but I can't lose you. 
Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm the father. So the same way, if Jesus said, if you call me your father, allow me to discipline you. Go through some things. So the father is a similar way. Allow me. Hear my wife. I can be telling my spiritual father every day. I say, Bishop, tell me something I harder. Let me see if I will not do it. I want hard thing. Because the harder it gets, the powerful and nothing come through. Somebody shout hallelujah. The higher it gets, the painful it becomes. The power releases. I see power releasing on somebody tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. This message is pinning somebody in this place right now. That if you never have a chance for your biological father to lay hand on you and bless you, God is giving you a second chance. Far a prophet, a father, and honor him. Whatever he say is happening. That's, how, that's why I'm not even, you know, pastors and bishop bless God for them. Hallelujah. I'm not taking that. Yeah, so, bra, I bless God. They call me to get them revelation and message. Yeah, email, yeah, my wife, yeah. I'm not going to call me. Amen. I had to put the phone speaker the other day. And I just took a 10 minute on, on the phone with a bishop. He said, but forget it. They message, they think you show me. Don't even push it to your chair anymore because I'm going to make some money. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. He said, I'm going to preach it to the world, to the world. The world must hear this message. I was in the kitchen, he may not hear me. He said, the world, the whole world must hear the message. Please don't preach it for somebody to see you preaching it on Facebook. I said, Bishop, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I'm humble. I said, you yourself, I learned something from you too. I said, I'm very humble. Amen, somebody. He would, they would call me and from South Africa, from, 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 from Australia. I said, Prophet, you have what it takes to make your people better. I said, I'm humble. When I, when I read that message, what, what, what Terrence, yeah, Terrence right there, I made my son conscious to read that message. It made me feel good. How my, how my teaching my life have changed. He read that with the other girl she's she here today. She said over there all the time. And I felt really good. Amen. I felt good. After I read that message, I, I was telling my son, I received over five other messages. People telling me, oh, prophet, your message changed me. I don't know. I said, oh, we're waiting for one person to say it first. I need to know. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not trying to be proud. I'm just trying to tell you what he did to me. A father releasing blessings on your life. God hold it. My strength in ministry is obedient the hard way. I have gone through tough time in ministry. I have gone through some tough time in ministry. I never asked you one day. I was preaching to a church in Minnesota and I said, on the pulpit, the church will pack. And I said, it is your attitude that determines your attitude. The pastor left and came and took the microphone from my hand. He said, they're not too pack on the pulpit. Don't be Remy. We don't hear no Remy here. Go and sit down. She said that to me. She said, it's not, don't be Remy here. Your attitude determines your attitude. She said, our Remy, our Remy. Then I, then I, go. Take the mic. I sat down. Guess what? She said, don't even stand where the pastor can say, go sit to the back. The Paul say, heavy is my witness. I did that. No complaint. Discipline is the key to elevation. When you know the power of persecution, you will see what God will do for you. Amen? Amen. The, ask Jesus, what is the power of persecution? You are humble to death, even the death on the cross. And God highly exalted him, gave him the name. But before that name came, he went through the cross. Some of us want name, but we don't want the cross. How can the name come when you don't want the cross? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It is the cross that will allow you to cross over to your next generation. The cross. Somebody shout amen. The cross. Amen. Even myself was driving not too long. Today, I'm talking about today. Somebody who castigated me, talk all negative things about me. They called today morning five times. I had a phone speaker for my sister, and twins can hear it. And maybe the person watching right now. They persecuted me to the best. I have gone to a meeting. I full minutes. I have gone to a meeting. I saw the person that I was speaking today. They said, I'm going to speak to them. Today, the person called begging that I should pray for them. Please pray for me. 
you know what? I did it for you to hear. So the fool on speaker today. Listen to me. What am I saying there to say? I'm not taking praise for myself. I'm trying to tell you the way forward in life. If God is not in something, something can happen. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Today I prophesy on somebody that God is about to give you something that you never deserve in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The blessing or the place of a father. Amen. amen. The place, I have so many scriptures to give. But that is not in my favor. I give you two. We close. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 from the NLT translation. 1 Corinthians, what? Let me show you the importance of a man that God placed over you. The Bible says, John 15, he said, I did not choose you, but I have chosen you. Look at the scriptures to that. What did I say? 1 Corinthians 4, verse 15. Verse 15. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 15. Please cut your phone off. Amen. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 15. Somebody say hallelujah. For the NLT. Let us read together. One, two, three. Because some of you never saw this scripture before. See, I saw this scripture. I begin more humble. I begin more humble. Amen. I begin more humble. Me and Pastor Gracie were talking about this scripture the other day. I begin more humble when I saw this scripture. One get challenged or that is not written in any Bible, spiritual father. If we show it, she will submit. That's what she said. On Facebook, too, not even far place. On Facebook. I said they want Satan to enter her. <laughs> Satan. Because Satan got agent, he can enter some people. You don't know that. Somebody say amen. Then read together. One, two, three, go everybody read. For even if you have 10,000 all of to teach you about Christ, you have uno. You see there, no S there. You have what? One spiritual father. Then he's trained to two meetings. He said, For if I begin your father in Christ, when I preach the good news to you, you see there? So how did I become your father? Because I preached the Bible to you. You sit on him, I become your father. So if I'm your father, whatever I release is God, don't change that protocol. It's there. The scripture is there. And they say, who show you that scripture? Let me put it over there. <laughs> the law. You read the Bible. Bless God for you. She posted that. In Jesus' mighty name. She posted that. Amen. This is the blessing on your life. I became your father. What your biological father did not do, I become your spiritual father. I can do more. Amen. So even if you are walking on a curse, if you are walking on a curse, the judge take me to release. Do you know why I fight my battle when I'm alone on my knees? That two are all meet in the spirit and see God that we serve. If this God is not a God of order, He hates the God of order. Amen. Hey, be disobeying you, you disobeying your mother that born you. It made no sense. Listen, because what you want low life on this earth in ministry and on earth, it could not come from your parents. Children obey your parent because what they have the blessing. The last time I give you this scripture, Genesis chapter 9, let me show you something. And when I went home, God gave me another scripture to add to that scripture in Genesis chapter 10. When I saw that, I said, oh, wow. Look at Genesis chapter 9. Quickly, Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. Verse 25 to 26. Genesis 9. We know this thing. We know this. In the middle of us sitting here, we are guilty of this. You have told some bad things to your father. You have did respect us on your, your father before. Something your father trusts you with. You have stared everybody in the community. You are exposing. You are seeing your father's weakness. And you are the one supposed to keep your father. Because your father is a human being. He's subject to error. He can make mistakes. 
You got to know this. Go to verse 20. Start from verse 20. Let me say something. Verse 20. That Jesse went out. Look at my B.O. Amen. I would die like Jesse would be straight for a game, so you should know. <laughs> Amen. All right. Okay, let's start from 21. 21. One, two, three, go. Everybody read. One day, he drank some wine he had made. And he began drunk. And lay naked inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that his father, verse 21, 22, 23, Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that his father was what? Keep going. 23. Was naked. He went outside and told his brothers. Then Sham and Japhthan took a rope head it over their shoulders and back into the tent to cover their father as they did this. They look the other way so they, they will not see him naked. They won't see him naked. Verse 24, keep going. When Noah woke up from his stupor, he learned that Ham, his youngest son, had done, had done. I mean, he read why his son had done. <coughs> then he cursed Kenna. That guy was not somebody easy to curse your own grandchildren. Curse Kenna. Then the son of Ham. May Kenna be a curse. May he be the lowest of seven. So he's ready to see that kind of curse. Not even has seven. But the lowest seven. The lower of self seven. That's why you see some people today. They keep they keep they keep going on and on and on. Nothing working for them. Curses are working against them. And no one said, May the Lord, the God of shame, bless, be blessed, and may Kenneth be the seven. He cursed. He did not curse uh, Ham, but he cursed Ham son. Amen. He cursed Ham's son. And I keep saying this thing over and over. The reason why he did that because when something happened to your child, you feel more pain. Listen, he did not curse Ham, right? Are you with me? He did not curse Ham, but did he bless Ham as well? He didn't curse him. He didn't bless him. What he did? He didn't know him. I don't, your father don't have to curse you. Or either bless you, but don't allow him to even he know you. He never bless him, but he never curse him. Can you imagine that? He did not bless him, but he did not curse him. When I read this thing, I said, God, why did he say that you didn't even, you didn't even allow Noah to even pronounce one blessing on him. Because the father was the one who was responsible. The father is the one that was responsible to bless the child. But in a case, he said, okay, since you did this, I'm not going to curse you, but I'm not going to bless you. Your child will feel pain. Now watch this. After that time in chapter 9, his, he had another son called Cruz. You know that story? He had another son called who? Cruz. Ham had another son. Have, ha, I mean, Ham had Kenan. He had Kuz. But he crushed Kenan. He ain't no Kuz. Kuz was supposed to get some blessing, but he ain't know this thing. Hear this and live. Why? Because of what the father did. I will not bless you, but I will not curse you. I will curse one person. He cursed Kenan. He didn't bless Cruz. Now, Cruz, hear this. Let me help you. Cruz. We came from Kush, C U S H. They were we came from. His skin color was black. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, you know the scripture. God bless you. He was black. They were all black people came from. 
the men are not blessed, but the men are not cursed. Which means if you want blood, look for your own blessing. That's why black people they can struggle before they get something they want to get. They were never blessed and they were never cursed. But they are struggling today. Can I tell you where they settled? Northern Africa. They went to Africa. They settled in you know that? Many men, they boy can read Bible. Somebody say hallelujah. You see what happened? I'm teaching you something good. They settled in Genesis chapter 10. Go there quickly. It did. Why Africa? The men were not blessed. He was settled there. My brother, I got so many things to tell you tonight, but I will keep them for next time. If you learn what I taught you and not be someone you receive it, you will walk in long life and abundance life. My duty here is to just tell you what God said. That's what I got to tell you. He level you to open up to receive it. And one day, one day, in the day coming soon, where your whole life will flash before God and God will remind you on this day that you close up to hear the word of the Lord. Amen, somebody. The day will come. Amen. 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 Eyes, what are the more? What are the more? Shopping more, cream, grave van more. I met this man who's supposed to preach tonight. I test him late, he didn't respond. They call him Sesh. His name is Sesh. He's from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe? Yes, yeah, Zimbabwe. I met him for the first time. We discussed about what we hated the book of all. We saw two gay, I mean, gay people were kissing in the shopping mall, and we hated that. Then yesterday we met again. What a good, I saw our action. I said, No, this is not an accident. God wants us to connect. Who are you? He said, You're a man of God. I said, But I'm a man of God too. I said, No wonder why we hated the same thing. Amen. And we start talking about ministry. That man took three minutes to talk to me. I said, Come to the church and preach. I'm like, But that guy, yeah, something wrong. What? Three minutes. Just three minutes. Blessing was there. Imani was there. I said, Three minutes. They may talk. I said, please come bless my people. Come and bless. I knew that he's powerful. He said something that already caught my attention. He said, listen to me, my, listen to me, brother. He said, I don't know why people are disobedient. I don't know why people can't be obedient. He said, listen to this. He said, on that movement, that movement when death show up, your money become useless that you don't want to give in church. You are disobedient, everything, nothing. Even if you have plan to go back and make things right, at that moment, it'd be too late. At that moment, all your friends that were advising you wrong don't come anymore. They don't count. At that moment, now you are facing death. You are about now to go meet your maker. What way, way are you going to tell your maker now? When death show up, at that moment, even if you got 100 pairs of shoes, red balloons, don't count anymore. 50 cars, don't count anymore. When he was telling me that, I started to reflect on the late Kobe Bryant. When death show up in a helicopter, what was he thinking on? What was his life movement look like? He knew that he was coming to die. Nothing could save him. He knew that he was going to die. 25 cars, one person gets 25 cars. When they were displaying the ball cars, 25 cars, latest cars, helicopter, house, mansion, all those things became useless at that movement. At that movement. At that movement. Everything. The thing was so high headed for. They respect everything. Can I tell you something? Listen, to show, and here I was saying, I said, listen to this. At that movement, if Kubi Brennan have opportunity to live for one day, and and, and, and death tell you, say, everything you own, give it to me to live for one day, he will give it. To show that one day to live is so expensive. More than thing that we are looking for. Nobody hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Just to live for one day, you can give everything to live for one day. At that moment, you won't live. If I say, okay, you will live to see tomorrow all your riches, your money in the bank, I want all. You will give everything to live for one day. But you can't get 10% to honor God in church. 
you can't get no offering. At the time when our things show up, when death show up, everything that is useless. It's useless. The girl we are chasing today, they become useless. At that movement, the money and the thing. You know what he said to me? I, I'm, I go, I pray that he come next week. I tested him on my way coming. I told my wife, we had a guest today. That was one of my Makakuni star who were worried because you have been here since 6 o'clock to meet him. He met somebody. From that moment when I talked to him, something dropped in me. I said, wow, everything is useless at that movement. Why do they say we can't obey this God? What is it? He said something that catch my attention. He said, do you know the worst people that Satan is, I mean, do you know the, the more difficult people on earth now? I said, no, sir. He said that the youth. He said, old people, they got it all together, some of them. But the youth, I said, why you say that? He said, because they are chasing popularity, chasing freedom, chasing money, chasing cell phone, going walking, born naked. They don't care to live for God anymore. When you preach about sin to them, say, oh, wait, man, we've been living up on sin a long time. What, what's the, what will happen to us? Yes, that Noah, when he prayed for 120 years, nobody listened to him until death came and the flood came, destroyed people. At that movement, what will you do at that movement? Somebody stay on your feet. Obey him. At that movement, at that movement. Oh, I forget about the, the other thing he said. The boy that faced this stage, the boy that faced this stage, I was telling my wife, he was sitting there, listen to me, I'm not going to call his name, that he passed up. And he was telling me, he said, and I pray he come here, and he sees, I got here, no more everything. I know you're watching again, sir. He said he thought that that boy was in our church. He thought he was in our church. He said because he left the church and you were attending one prophetic church, they didn't know. I said, no, you were not in our church. I asked, I said, why he left? He said, the money they were paying him to play was small. Heaven is my witness. I'm standing on the altar here. So he got angry and left the church. Three to four months later, he died. He left for honor grace. He said it to me. He died. I can't lie on the dead. That's what he said. I said, really? He said, yeah. He just got angry. Oh, you're paying me small money. They were paying him, but he said the money was small. And walk away from honor grade three months later. And the reason why I, I, I believe that because he came here and I asked him why he said, he said, oh, I left that church for some time. I said, what church are you in? I was trying to get him to come. I said, what church are you in tonight? He said, no, I just want to rest and just chill. You see what happened? That one that high he died. And I pray that Pastor Sesh will come here and to minister to us. To young people, maybe he's called to young people. Hallelujah. Amen. From the Zimbabwe church. I felt sorry for that when he said that. I want you to come and minister to young people. To minister to myself because I'm young. <laughs> Amen. I'm the you are 12 years old. I want also. So come, minister, come here. Come. Hallelujah. I love this guy. And I pray that the Lord use you to change your life around. One minute later. Now, listen to me. I will talk about it. He called me ahead of time that when God shows something about him today, I'm going to go in the office to talk about it. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, please don't prophesy. <laughs> you see, he warned me ahead of time. I like him. Amen. He said, prophet, today, you know, prophecy, I will come, but in the office, give my prophecy in my office. Amen. And I will give it to you in the office that you will cry. You will share tears, but the tears will be good tears in Jesus' mighty name. Go stand over there. I love him. I want Pastor Cruz to come to preach to you. See, she preach to us in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Stretch your hand to heaven. Say, Lord, I pray. That your blessing, blessing be upon me. Be upon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want that spirit of rejection. I'm not saying that because of, because of him walking out of the jail while he died. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about what he pastor said. I was not there. Hallelujah. 
be speaking from that because I don't want you to say the other way that, oh, prophet said, I didn't know something going to happen. No, I'm not the one who have life. I don't put curses on nobody. God forbid. I'm here to bless God people. Amen. Hallelujah. Your own doing, as the Bible says, your sin will find you out. So I will never curse anybody. I'm saying it on TV and on radio. I can't. That's not my place. I want people to be blessed. Amen. I want you to find Jesus, to find God. To say, Lord, I'm submitting to your word. Take away the spirit of pride, arrogance from my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Are you with me tonight? I want you to take out this real pride. Take this real pride from my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Remain standing. If you look at Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. I just want to correct this quickly. Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. Think about the movement. If that's you show all right now. They don't respect old and young. They don't respect children. They don't respect babies. They don't respect even the baby in the womb. They can show up. But the Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8, he says, why should you die before your time? Amen. Now you see, the descendants of Ham were Cruz, a son. And what? Mariam. Mas, mas Riem, put in Kenya and Kenya. Keep going. I want to show you something. Look at that scripture. Look at verse, verse 7. That's where they came from. The season where crew was said, okay. So, okay, there's another scripture that say where they went, they settle. No time to do that. They settle in North Africa and in Saudi, Saudi Arabia and then in Egypt. They were they settled. From Bible days, and it spread all over the world. And your skin color, that's where you came from. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> lift your hand. Receive from the Lord right now. Lord, to trust and Sing that song well. God has no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Father, we thank you tonight. Keep singing that song. Trust and obey. No other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. trust and obey. If you are here, you know you've been disrespectful to your biological parents. You said something to them and they were not happy to grieve. If you find your life been backsliding and not that before, you want to reconnect yourself to God tonight. I'm not going to prophesy out tonight. We've got a place to go right now right after this service. I want you to come here. Let me pray for you right now. Say, Lord, I have done something to my parents. Don't be ashamed. I promise you, some of you sit down will hinder you because of pride. He will hinder some of you. I don't want to go up there, so come to the altar. Come right here. Come here. Trust and obey. Love is no other way. 
Makara, come and repent. To be happy in Jesus. Oh. But to trust and obey. Sing it again, sing it again. Trust and obey. Makala Bahayaba. For there's no in the beauty Lord is telling me that and open you mercy for there's no tonight. I want you to lift your hand and talk to God wherever you are. I want God, come on you, God call you to ministry but you don't have the patience. You can't stand the fire. I pray for you tonight that God will give you the fire to stand. But the Bible says every man will be tested with fire. You are not attacked until you start to do what God called you to do. Then you start seeing some attacks. Enemy don't want you to do what God has called you to do. Begin to talk to God. If you are staying in there, you know in your, your conscience is telling you, you know, Father, bless. I'm in my area to bless you tonight by the grace of God. You want God to change your life tonight because you have said something to your parents that you know it is wrong, especially to your father. You want God to change your life tonight. Begin to talk to God wherever you are tonight. You didn't come here by yourself. There are scripture you know today. It was because of this church you know that scripture. Even if that one scripture you got to learn from this church, appreciate God. Paul said, because I preach the word of God to you, I begin your father. Thank you, Jesus. Talk to God, whatever you are. Father, we pray tonight that life will never be the same anymore. That life will never be the same anymore. We receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. When I had a dream about you right now, I was telling you, Doris, yesterday, Yesterday I had a dream about you. The enemy wanted to set you up. They want to bring the wrong person to you in for a relationship. I got out to my wife and will pray for you. That person will even cause you to leave the church. And we said, no, thank God for showing it to me. I want you to want to pray for you tonight. Lord, let no man or root you from where God has planted you. No one who will come to you to deceive you. God will not send no person to deceive you in the name of Jesus. Receive grace tonight. Receive grace tonight. Amen. Receive grace tonight. Amen. Receive grace tonight. Amen. Mama, come here. Let me pray for your daughter. I saw your daughter in a cast, but I'm going to rebuke her in Jesus' name. Amen. What happened to her? It came back double. The enemy came to attack your daughter. I saw her in a casting. You got oil? Okay, bring the oil. Let me pray for her. I saw her daughter in a casting. And the funeral was already packed. It was packed. People came from all over the world to attend the funeral of her daughter. I saw her in a casting. We're going to break it tonight. I don't just see things, but I saw it.
bosom. Lift your hand. Doris, come and lay hand on the woman's chest and rebuke the pain that I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling a chest pain right now, especially on her breast. Rebuke every satanic power. Receive your healing tonight. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. to send the oil all over the world. People used to be blessed from it. If you're on the prayer line and need no evil oil. The lady went to go pick the oil up from the milk bar. She couldn't touch the milk bar. She fell. They had to come pick her up because it was so powerful. Take time to pray over the no evil oil. Call it prophetic solution. No evil. When you hear the Bible talk about Jesus was saying, delay all from evil. Bless this oil that bless this oil for 21 days. Pray over it. The reason I stopped sending to people because people used to send evil oil to people and they collect money in my name and I stop it. The Lord want me to start over to pray over oil and send it to people and get blessing. There's no evil oil. There's nothing wrong with sowing seed, but never put price tax on what God is doing. The time the men of God told to pray over it, to put your bottle, to print stuff. Appreciating with a seed, not setting this oil. And not for sale. I repeat, not for sale. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to give you the oil tonight. Me and you know what is happening to you. And you're going to take the oil, wrap it on you before you sleep. Do it for 21 days. Your love will not be this. Take, take the oil from me, hold it. Take it from me. Name of Jesus. God bless our Lord. Lift your hand to heaven. Mama, don't cry. We cancel death tonight. Don't cry.
desperately. I'm praying for you because what you told me, and I told you to come to church so we can break it. I'm not going to say it here because you have to tell me. When, when I know something, I don't prophesy on it, okay? That's why I don't see people okay, after my services. But I'm going to pray. There's an evil spirit that keeps following you. And that's why you had that dream. You believe that I'm a prophet? Yes. Do you believe what you believe? Yes. You believe. Her sister was pregnant for two years. Is that two years? And two, two and a half years, she was pregnant. And she was here the last time I prayed over some Aten. And you sent it to Nigeria. And I said, after she was using it for 21 days, that thing that he was some of the baby would turn around and then uh, they will get ready to come up. And the news? Yes, yeah, she asked me um, if she would continue drinking the oil here again after 21 days. So the baby is moving now. Hallelujah. It's about to calm down. When she went to the hospital? Yes, yeah, she went to the hospital. The, the woman that check on, check her, told her that the baby is ready to come out. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. She was here, and I knew what was the problem. And she mailed that thing to Nigeria. Two years and a half pregnancy. The enemy placed something in her womb. Whatever it lays, and I said it's gonna come up. Hallelujah. I'm gonna give you the no evil oil. Let it reach her in two weeks. I don't, I don't, yeah, so the baby can find out they come. Amen. Hey, expensive to send oil there. Send it there. Woman, send it there. Send it for her. I'm giving it to her from a free heart. It's a no evil oil. There's a lot of evil that is happening, and God will bless her, okay? How much you say to send the order? How much to send it? Two hundred from here, Africa. Don't okay. Don't send it. That we'll pray for her. <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> Raise your hand. Take it. Pick it. Put it on. We'll pray for her. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we'll pray for her. Something will happen. Amen. Give me that oil. Let me pray for your daughter. Father, we cancel death from over P40. We cancel death in the name of Jesus. We can cancel death. Lord, you said the anointing break their you and live for burning. We cancel death. She will not die. She will live. We cancel death in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You will see the power of God, okay? Mm. He's blessed. Now, did your uncle do the surgery? What happened? It came through? That's what I wanted to hear. They called me last night that our uncle wanted to do open heart surgery to pray for them and I said nothing will happen we bless the Lord that it went successfully in Jesus mighty name raise your hand you are blessed tonight go to your seat quickly the whole can close the service in Jesus mighty name amen you are blessed tonight if you hear you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior or you receive Jesus still going back and forth you want God to bless you make that 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 very 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 important hallelujah stay on your feet and close Um, he may have announced the revival already. I don't want to talk much about this revival. From the 16, I want to see you every day. Sacrifice that one week from the 16 of November to the 21st. Six days for a power pack life changing transformation revival. Okay? Don't miss it. It's very rewarding. Invite somebody. That life will never be the same. We have our papa coming from Nigeria all the way to Kaduna. He's going to be here as well. Yes. Amen. Powerful man of God. So I will come to a close and I just want you to say, God, thank you for what you're about to do in my life. In Jesus' name. Say, Father, what you're about to do 
do it quickly. In Jesus' mighty name. I want everybody here to know to get ticked 21 out of 21. It's a no more.